So you might want to save a couple of times as the time draws near. The time we need to get is 22, 26, 15. So it's because you see how fast it whizzes by. And look, you can see the you can see the the star in the stars in the sky moving. It's pretty cool seeing it spin in the in the air like that. Of course, it's the world that's spinning. But this is no time for a lesson in astronomy. We need to kill people. Well, one person. Well, a whole cargo ship full of people. But yeah. Uh, okay. 22-26. It's... Oh, God. I just missed it. Oh. Okay. See, this is why you want to save. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it's tempting to rush these things uh, when you've been waiting for two weeks. Uh, yeah. Now, once the ship emer... Let's get into f first person view here. Once the ship emerges, uh, it will fly to the minimum allowed distance, uh, altitude, sorry, for hyperspace, and then jump away. There are two ways to deal with this. Uh, wait a minute, he's going to emerge very in 10 seconds, yeah. Uh, the first method, which I'm going to show you first, is uh, to attack them as they leave. This gives you the best chance of actually destroying them, but of, as you may imagine, ah, there it is, see? Now we can click on him, and, and there we, oh, he's got an energy bomb. That's going to make this tricky. But let's uh, let's launch and attack him. Go into engine off mode as usual, and then open fire. You see there, we get a uh, we get a fine for discharging a weapon, and of course piracy and murder, which is ten thousand credits, which kind of makes this not very profitable. So not only do we have to deal with the uh, the swarms of police that are now coming down on us, we have to deal with this uh, conviction without even a trial. It was a weapon malfunction, Governor. Honest. My girlfriend spelt the Cardi Breezer on the pre-fire chamber. Oh, shit. That, see that noise? That's his energy bomb. It's taking my shield down to zero and reduced my hull integrity to 24%. You can see why you need a shield generator. It also damaged something, didn't he? What did he damage? He damaged my habit select analyzer. It means uh, analyzer, analyzer, and my speech synthesizer. <laughs> I can't let him get away now because... Uh, oh, he's got no drive. That means he can't jump. Excellent. And his hull's down to 75%. Yeah. But as you can see, the fine for piracy and murder is uh, 10,000 credits. And you'll have to pay that back if you ever want to dock in a spaceport of the same allegiance. So if you do this in the Empire, uh, you can't dock at another Empire space station. And you hear that laser noise? That's the police. That's not this guy. Uh, yeah. So it, it can make the Enterprise a lot less profitable. And it's not just a one-time uh, cost. Can you see all those police? Come on, I can get this guy. Gotta watch out for that laser beam there. Uh. <laughs> it's pretty much the only time in the game, apart from on the military missions, where you'll be attacked by multiple enemies. Uh, you'll not only have to deal with the fines, but the uh, and the police, but the criminal record, which uh, I'm not sure what effect it has, but it's just a nasty blemish on your on your. God, look at this. Police. Ah, fuck you, police. <laughs> I'm trying to kill someone here. You're not making it easy. But I am managing it. One thing you need to watch out for is that uh, if you attack them too close to the surface, they may panic and uh, turn and try to attack you, and that will cause them to crash into the surface. Now, for some reason, this sounds ideal, but uh, this doesn't count as a fulfillment of your contract. Oh, bit of glitching there. Uh... Maybe there's a clause that uh, defines a crash as pilot error, and uh, so the assassin doesn't get paid for that. Whoa, look at those lasers. Oh, my God. Oh, these police are glitching out like crazy. I've never seen that before. That's really weird. Hmm. Yeah, um, but fortunately, he didn't do that this time, so I'm going to be able to fulfill this contract by killing him. Come on, 7% hole. Now, once I've... Uh... There, I did it. Now, let's pause and set a course back to Akinar and engage hyperspace we got away with it sort of the hull condition is at 24% our hyperspace cloud analyzer is damaged and we have an imperial criminal record with the unlawful, for the unlawful discharge of my weapon and piracy and murder hmm it's not the, really the kind of thing you want on your CV Problem is also that uh, I can show. I think I can show you quickly if I. Oh no, I can't ask for landing permission until I'm nearby. But basically, if you try to approach one of these spaceports, uh, they'll say no because you're a pirate and a murderer, and you unlawfully discharged your weapon while you were committing piracy and murder. 
So, yeah. See, now you can pay your, you know, how do you pay your fine if you're if you can't dock? Well, you pay it by remote transfer, and we can do that. But uh, I think we should reload and be a bit more professional about it. Now, the way to do this is, uh, well, first just reload and skip ahead a bit. What was it? Twenty two. 22, 26, 15. You don't need to be too precise about that because all you really need to do this way is wait for their hyperspace cloud. Now there he is. Let's follow him up anyway. Now it, it, they don't consider this weird at all. You know, this guy's just been sitting out here for for two weeks and he only emerges when this guy uh, launches. But you know, limited AI. <laughs> Let's select him again and put on our radar mapper. He still has the energy bomb. This is going to be a problem. Maybe I should have bought some missiles. That's a good idea. You should really buy missiles, but um, they can cause this weird glitch where the uh, where the target ship will sort of fly off in the opposite direction as the missile. Anyway, as you can saw, our, our laser was adequate. Now, let's just wait for him to go into hyperspace. Come on. I'm not going to hurt you. There we go. See, that's the hyperspace cloud. You've probably seen them before. Well, you've definitely seen them before. Anyway, if we, we have it selected already because we had the source of the hyperspace cloud selected, but you can select it at any time just by clicking on it like any object in the game. And if we click here, we get an indication of where it has gone to. I, f I fatty. I fatty. Uh, <laughs> and it will, be, it will arrive there on the 4th of March at that time, and it tells you its mass. So you can click around on different... Uh, hyperspace departure clouds and find out where things have gone, although it's not really worth it, uh, except when you're tracking somebody. So let's see, where, where, did, where did that say? Sector 1-5? So that's this sector. I fatty, there it is. Let's set a course and engage our hyperspace drive. Now what we should see here is two hyperspace clouds. No, we only see our own. And this is our arrival cloud from Zalagra. Now what this means is that that ship was faster than us, even though it was a um, a transport ship. Now, which is quite impressive, because we have a maximum light, uh, range of 12 light years, which means it takes us a week to go 12 light years. So they must have uh, a maximum range of, I don't know, 14 or something. But all is not lost. We can look around in this system. And you see here, that's us. Our, we've selected our hyperspace cloud, and that blue object there is us and you can see very close by is a sort of grayish object and if you notice that that was the same color as the ship appeared uh, our target ap ship appeared on the scanner so and if we use our radar mapper we can see it is indeed the same ship and if you can see if you try to send a message to it it is indeed AZ612 let's send him a message what is your destination he is bound for Fort Matthews. Now one thing you can do is go to Fort Matthews and wait from there, but then we have much the same problem. So what we're going to do is set our autopilot for him. Now this is not really what the autopilot is designed for, but it can work. First I'm going to save. Now of course if your ship doesn't have a faster acceleration than the target ship, then you're not going to be able to catch up to it. Fortunately, my ship is pretty fast, but there is another problem in which you will overshoot the the target. This happens because normally when you're approaching a spaceport, it will automatically stop the Star Dreamer when you get within a certain distance and kind of compensate for the overshoot that would happen if it wouldn't automatically just align you with the station. This doesn't happen here, so you kind of have to do a sort of swinging back and forth, getting closer each time. So there, I've just started to accelerate back towards him, even though my actual speed relative to the star is going down. It's best to not use maximum time acceleration. And you will eventually get close enough to it, but you also want to make sure you don't actually just crash into him. So you want to kind of stagger the acceleration down a little. But yeah, I'm getting closer, bit by bit. But this won't always work. If we had a hyperspace range of, say, 10, uh, this guy may have got to the spaceport before we before we uh, could intercept him, and then we'd lose the uh, we would we would lose the contract. We would uh, fail the contract, uh, and that would not be good because I think that uh, that in fact causes your uh, reputation to go down, and you'll be less likely to be accepted for a killing mission in the future. 
You can see we're drawing close. And I think we should probably try to slow down a bit. This is probably around the time you want to start setting manual control. See, we overshot again. And... Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, let's... In fact, let's use the autopilot a bit more. You'll kind of swing back and forth like this. You'll overshoot, and then you'll overshoot by a bit less, and so on. But eventually you'll be able to make it. Come on. But you do need to be careful. Yeah, it's a shame the Star Dreamer doesn't have an alarm clock, so you can just set a time for it to wake you up, rather than having to edge forward bit by bit with the... Uh, when you're waiting. It's... oh god. Did I lose the lock? Oh, one thing you can do is you can set the sort. If you've messaged them, you can set target to source of last message. See, that's very useful for that kind of purpose. So that's the only reason, really, to message them. You can also tell them to surrender or die, but all they ever say is "ha ha." I don't know if they think it's a joke or if they're just like uh, laughing at your pitiful attempt to intimidate them. I'm not sure. Okay, we're getting close enough to use uh, uh, engine off mode. I'm reverse thrusting here, so we're approaching a few kilometers a second. Let's keep slowing down. If we can get a relative... Uh, if we can match our relative speeds, then uh, we can quite effectively take a good first hit, because he won't, he won't react with hostility until we fire on him. No matter how close we get, and how weird and intimidating this is, considering this is the vastness of space, there's no reason for us to get this close unless we're trying to kill him. Whoop. Yeah, so it's worth taking a bit of time to, to get this right. Just bear with me. I could just fire on him now, but I want to get a good barrage off before we uh, get into combat. Come on. See, the pr problem is he's accelerating away from us, and we're kind of spinning around him. And it's causing this kind of sideways momentum, which is a bit of a problem. There we go, that's evened out a bit, and we're heading towards him. Let's open fire. You can see his hull damage there. Now, if we take him by surprise, we may be able to destroy him before he dis uses his energy bomb. Oh dear, there we go. Now, our, that's taking down our shield, so we definitely don't want him to hit us with uh, with uh, his laser, if he has one. I'm sure he does. They all do. But, as you can see, our shields slowly recharge, and our hull doesn't. You can get a hull uh, repair system, but they're extremely expensive and large, so you can't get it for a ship like this. But, as you can see, we're making short work of this guy. It's a lot easier once if you set your relative velocity to be basically the same. And there is nothing left but some metal alloys. Now we need to go back to Akinar. And fortunately we do have enough to make the jump, so we don't even have to uh, stop off in, the, in this system. So let's just set our course for one of the nearby, well not nearby, very far away, uh, spaceports. And then we will get our second target. <laughs>